I thought a tattoo was going to be the final chapter in my story and my journey with cancer. In November of 2013, I decided to take my trip, myself on a trip to Kauai, my favorite Hawaiian island, both to do some writing and to have some time for some R&R. &R. At the time, uh, my daughters had moved out and had been out of our home for a while. My husband and I had been separated for over a year, and he was now back in the house as a roommate. And um, I just needed a break from everything. I was also having some physical issues that I didn't know what they were about, and I thought all I needed was some rest. So I packed myself up. He took me to the airport. I brought my journal along. That is where I write all my stories. And I went off to Hawaii with a beautiful condo overlooking the Pacific Ocean and a window to sit at every morning and do my writing. Every day I went to the local coffee shop in Hanalei Bay and would get my latte or sometimes I'd indulge in mocha <laughs> as a change. And I noticed these women every morning with the most gorgeous tattoos, young women who had gorgeous floral tattoos on their arms and their chest and across their backs. And on the third day, I had the courage to ask one of them, where did you get the work done? Because there seemed to be a, a pattern to everybody's. There was like a connection between them. And she said, oh, it was Billy across the street. She's the owner of the Blue Tiki Tattoo Shop, and she did them for us. So I thought about that, and I thought, you know, ever since I had my mastectomy, in 2007, I had contemplated a tattoo. My surgeon had even suggested you might want to do one day. One day. But at the time, I thought it, it, the tattoo was going to be about hiding what was ugly. I didn't like my scar at the beginning. I was very shocked because at the time that I met with her and she handed me a book, the scar that was in the picture was a little half-moon crescent just this beautiful little tiny crescent shape. And I thought, OK, I can handle that. But when I woke up from surgery and the day I took my bandages off in my house, I found out that the scar went from here all the way to my sternum. And uh, it was red and um, unhappy at the time. And I didn't know how it was going to heal. So at first, I had a really hard time with it. How was I going to come to terms with how I looked in the mirror? My girlfriend, who's a nurse, came and visited right after my surgery, and she told me, your scar is beautiful. Your surgeon did a fantastic job. I tried to believe her, but at the time, it was hard. Well, now fast forward to this time in 2013, and the, the scar indeed had healed, and it was beautiful. It was thin, pencil thin, white, almost barely noticeable. And so getting the tattoo by then was really about not hiding something, but it was like adding to the experience I had been through. It was representation, a representation of the transformation that I had been through and the journey I'd been on from having to go through a really scary time and having to come to terms with what I had decided to do and then also coming to embrace who I was and how I looked. So I went over to see Billy that afternoon, and we had an immediate connection. I just knew that she was the one, if I was going to do it, she was going to be the one to do it. She showed me some books. I told her about the things that I wanted, the images I wanted, because I knew that the images needed to have significance for me. And she showed me some pictures, and they weren't quite right. So she said, I'm going to be off for the next three days. I'll draw sketches for you, and I'll send them to you. And then if you get anything that you want, any pictures when you're looking online, send them to me from email. So I did that. And the following day, um, I still didn't, I knew I wanted a flower in the center, but I didn't know what it was going to be. So the following day, I went and had a meditation with an energy healer and um, did some work thinking that that would help my physical issues I was dealing with. And at the end of the meditation I did with her, I saw this gorgeous pink lotus flower. And the words I heard inside were, I am. I am. I am beautiful. I am whole. I am alive. I'm vibrant. I am a thriver. It's not about being a survivor. And so I knew that the lotus was the, one of the images. 
And I went back and I looked for images on the computer and found this gorgeous pink lotus and sent it to her so that she could um, include it. The, that afternoon, I went on a walk on the beach in Hanalei Bay. And I noticed three young women walk in front of me. And this woman in the center, I recognized her immediately. And flanking her were obviously her two best friends, one very pregnant. And they walked on. And then I saw them go jump in the water and start body surfing. And I got up, and I walked down the beach. And I said, I'm going to approach her because I need to get her autograph for my daughters. It was Bethany Hamilton, the woman who was the character of Soul Surfer, is the, the stories about her. Well, as I approached and I saw them having so much fun, I knew that I couldn't do it. I couldn't go up and interrupt them. And then I just, I watched them for a while, and then I went back and I sat down, and I had my journal with me, and I started writing, and I realized that there was a message for me in seeing her. There's Bethany with one arm missing. And here she is, joyful and having fun and thriving. And it was like, once more, the message was, I am whole. On Saturday, I had my tattoo done. And what happened in that experience of five hours was an incredible experience. It was painful at times. It was out of body at times. It was, it was a journey in and of itself. And um, Billy knew exactly what I needed at any given time. Sometimes she sang to me when she saw that I needed to be soothed. There were times that she spoke to me when she knew I needed to concentrate on something outside of myself. And there were times that she got completely quiet when she knew that I needed to go inward, especially as she worked on my scar and hit the st my sternum where my chest tubes had once been. When I got up and looked at my scar, and real, I'm sorry, at my tattoo and realized what she had done. It was incredible. There was a lotus flower on ripples of water, a panther peeking out with amber eyes from the, on, behind the lotus, and a monarch butterfly, which for me represented transformation. So it was about bravery and strength and transformation, and I am. And I went home from that trip grateful for our time together and continuing to write my story and knowing that life would go on, because what I ended up finding out that I didn't know at the time was I would be diagnosed for a second time on a second Valentine's Day, seven years after the first time, with a different cancer, with anal cancer. And that, that would be a whole new journey. But in the midst of that, I've, I continued to write my story. And I knew that life goes on. We're going to have experiences at no matter what. But when we need to get our message out when our message is urging us to tell it. We have to, because every story matters. We all matter, and our stories are important and significant, and they help each other. They help us. They help ourselves, and we help each other. Thank you.